Is it the last? No, this is not the last name of Sara. That's the companion. Hello everyone, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with five books that I absolutely adore but don't talk a lot about on my channel. I wouldn't say that they're necessarily underrated because I think that for at least four of them a lot of people have read them and have talked about them but I haven't on my channel other than like in a wrap-up video. So I kind of just wanted to highlight these books because like I said I don't talk about them nearly as much as I should. I tried to pick books that were of different genres so that I wasn't talking about all one genre so hopefully I did a good enough job and without further ado let us get started <sighs> The first book that I have is The Cage Queen by Kristen Cicerelli. This is the companion novel to The Last Name of Sara. This book follows Roa instead of Asha, who is the main character of The Last Name of Sara. Roa's sister, Essie, ends up dying, and she's very upset about this because they were inseparable. Dax is Asha's brother. He is the rightful heir to the throne, and he is actually the one who was responsible for Essie's death. There's a war beginning in their country, and so Dax makes a deal with Roa to make her queen if she gives him the army that he needs in order to win this war. Roa finds out that she is able to bring her sister back from the dead through a process called the relinquishing, but she needs to kill her husband in order to do so. So it's like the story of this war that's going on and a whole bunch of political stuff but then also Roa trying to come to terms with having to kill her husband in order to bring her sister back but also falling in love at the same time and it's like a lot of fun. I absolutely love The Last Name of Sara like I said so I was super excited about this book and it definitely did not disappoint. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I was a big fan of Dax in the first book so I was definitely intrigued to see more of a focus on his character. I also really liked how we were able to see his character from a different perspective than Asha, his sister, because I think that a sibling relationship is a lot different than a romantic relationship. I'm also a huge sucker for the hate to love trope, so I absolutely adored Roa and Dax's relationship and watching them learn to trust each other and then be betrayed by each other and then learning to love each other again. Like, it was just like a roller coaster of emotions and I was here for it. The only major complaint I had about this book was that there was no dragons and that was one of the reasons why I loved the first book so much, so I was a bit disappointed that there were no dragons in this book, but I still haven't read the third book, so maybe there's gonna be dragons in that one. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that one is like a pirate lesbian story kind of thing, which I am also definitely here for. Don't quote me on that because I could be very wrong. And what I have heard and what I remember, which I could be mixing that book up with another book, we don't know at this point. The I'm next book that I have is a contemporary. It is at Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover, and I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars as well. So this book follows Sydney, who is 22. She thinks that this year is going to be her year until she finds out that her boyfriend and her best friend Tori are sleeping together. So she leaves their apartment that they share together, and with nowhere else to go, her intriguing neighbor Ridge decides that she can crash at his place until she's back on her feet and it's like the story of their friendship developing into a little bit more. I want to preference that I was super into this book but I also recognize that Colleen Hoover is kind of problematic at times so you know when you're reading her books like go into it with a grain of salt if you will because sometimes the things that she writes about are not the greatest. When I was reading this I didn't expect to like it as much as I did because I am not the biggest fan of the cheating trope or like anything to do with cheating because like it's not a good feeling so <laughs> I know that the characters are hurting inside but I honestly was really into this which is surprising. This is a slow burn romance which I was a big fan of. I will say that the two main characters Sydney and Ridge were both annoying in different ways but together I really liked them. I think that Sydney cried way too much for her own good. It was like every 10 pages she was sobbing about something and then Ridge I think that you know the whole cheating thing was not a good thing for him to do but I think overall the way that he handled his situation was good if that makes any sense whatsoever. I also thought that the inclusion of the soundtrack in the back of this book was really interesting because the book is very focused on music and the fact that the author had somebody hired to write 
songs specifically for this book and like record them and put them on to YouTube was really cool because you could like go and listen to the songs and like pair them with what was happening in the story. It was a really fun time so like if you ever get the book I highly recommend checking out the playlist because it's like great addition. Okay the next book is one that I have not seen anybody on booktube talk about but when I read this book I loved it so much. The book is Abomination by Gary Whitta. This is like a historical fiction fantasy horror thing all wrapped into one. I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars and it is a bit confusing to explain so bear with me but it basically follows somebody named Wolfric the Great who helps King Alfred defeat this war and he wants nothing more than to be left alone in his cottage in the countryside by himself with his wife Gwen. But it is not long until Wolfric is summoned by the king again to help him rid the world of a new threat. There is a power-hungry archbishop who has found these ancient scrolls written in Latin which he can recite from and turn helpless creatures into beasts that they are calling abominations. While Wolfric is trying to rid the world of these abominations, he meets a young girl named Indra who is on a quest to prove to her father that she can become the first female knight of the order, which is a group of monster slayers. But in order to do this, Indra must slay an abomination and bring the head back to her father to become one of these knights and it's like those two stories combining into one. It actually took me a really long time to read this book just because of the gruesome details in it. It was really disgusting and I have a pretty weak stomach when it comes to gore in books which is weird because gore in movies I'm fine with which is you know, makes no sense because you can see the gore in movies but you can't see the gore in books, but vivid imagination here makes it ten times worse than it probably is written. The book is definitely very character driven, but I loved that aspect of the book because there were a lot of characters and you got to see the backstory of each of them and why they chose the path that they did. I really liked the relationship that developed between Wolfric and Indra. I think it was very complex and very interesting. I was also a huge fan of the abominations and the way that the author wrote them it was so clear in my mind. Like it was so easy to picture these creatures and they're disgusting and creepy and just like terrifying and it just made the book so much more thrilling and creepy because you were able to picture them so vividly. I think that if you are going to pick up this book you need to go into it knowing that the first half is a lot of backstory about Wolfric and why he is the man that he is 15 years later but the second half of the book is where the action really picks up and there's so many twists and turns that you don't see coming and it's like so action-packed and entertaining so definitely push through the backstory to get to the good part because it's worth it in the end. I just think that it was like the perfect combination of fantasy and horror that I've never seen mixed together before so it just really stood out to me as a book so definitely recommend if you guys are into like fantasy mm -hmm. horror. The next book I have is another like sci-fi fantasy book. It is The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. This book takes place in The Kingdom which is an immersive fantasy amusement park where guests go to make their dreams come true. Anna is one of seven fantasists which are robotic princesses who are solely there to make guests happy. One day Anna meets a park employee named Owen who she begins to feel a connection with which she is not actually programmed to be able to do so. So she's a little bit confused when these feelings start to arise. That's when Owen is murdered in the park and Anna is accused of being the killer and a trial begins and it's like the story of that. I am a huge fan of like mixed media books so the format of this book was super intriguing to me. It's told in two timelines, the past and the present, but it's also told in like emails and trial transcripts and little notes. It's just really interesting to read. The book jumps back and forth a lot so it's a lot of you as a reader trying to piece together different tidbits of information that you're given in each timeline to figure out the whole picture and what actually happened to Owen. It was really interesting to see Anna grow as a main character because she starts off very naive because that's the way she's programmed to be but since she is a robot the more she takes in in her world the more she learns and it was really interesting to see her grow as the story progressed and start to question her humanity and the action of others. I also really liked how we got 
different plot lines from the other seven fantasies as well, especially Nia and Eve. I think that their plot lines were the most engaging and interesting, and I was very intrigued to see what actions they chose to do to bring them to where they were going. The one thing I will say is that the book is pretty predictable, but it was a really entertaining kind of predictability. I would still recommend it if you're into fantasy, but there is a lot of animal cruelty in it, so definitely trigger warning if that's something you can't handle, go into this book with caution. And then the last book that I have is one that is talked about a lot on booktube, so it's not really underrated, which is why I can't call this video an underrated books video, but it is This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. The book follows two main characters, Kate Harker, who is drawn back to the city because of some things in her past, and August Flynn, who is a monster, and it's like how their stories interact with each other. This is my first Victoria Schwab book, and I am honestly embarrassed about how long it took me to read one of her books because I absolutely fell in love with this book. I loved Kate and August as main characters. Kate was just so badass and sassy and just like a kick-ass female in general, and then August was so self-aware of himself, and I loved watching him develop as a character. I also really love how this particular book in the series was not so focused on romance, like it had so many other elements that were way bigger of a focus than the possible romance factor. The only reason I ended up giving this a 4.5 instead of a 5, because honestly it is a 5 star series, was that the beginning was very info dumpy and it took a very long time to get into the story. But this is one book that I think needs to be made into a movie because the concept of the monsters and the things that go on in this book are so intriguing and I just want to see it on the big screen so badly. So if you haven't read this book already, which I'm sure you have because everybody on booktube has read it by now, then I definitely recommend it because it is a heck of a good time. Alright everybody, so those are some books that I absolutely love with my whole heart that I don't talk about enough on my channel. Let me know down below if you want to see more of these videos because I have so many books that I just don't talk about but love so so much and let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!